Welcome to Creative Living, where we help you live your most creative life. I'm Jane Klaus. Well, the snow and ice are gone, the flowers are starting to bloom, and winter is behind us. So today we say goodbye to winter and hello to warmer days. But first, let's see what's coming up on the show. Ways to get our spring lawns ready. We talked to the supermarket guru about lowering our grocery bills. Plus, how to make your own chemical-free cleaning products. That and much more coming up on this episode of Creative Living. We are happily saying goodbye to winter and getting our spring lawns ready for all of that outdoor fun is at the top of our list. So joining us to talk about it all today is Chris Kaiser, president and CEO of the Turf Mutt Foundation. Chris, for those of us who don't know, explain what the Turf Mutt Foundation is. Sure, it's the education arm of the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute, which is a trade association of equipment makers. It also serves as the education foundation or the education voice of equip expositions, one of the largest uh, trade shows in the United States. Uh, we help educate landscapers, hardscapers, people who help create the outdoors. So it's the education arm of the industry. Explain to us what the mission of the Turf Mutt Foundation is. Sure, it's to empower kids and educate kids about becoming stewards of the outdoors. Remember, nature starts at your back door. So we want kids to better understand how important their outdoor space is and how beneficial it is. We want to empower, empower kids to understand that and help them help their parents plant the right plants and maintain their outdoor space in a way that benefits everyone. Now, there's a cute story behind how you got the name of the foundation. Explain that to us. When we talked about this, how could we educate kids about the outdoors? They don't want to listen to an old guy or somebody who runs a trade association. We said we want to create a superhero to battle the bad, bad guys, heat freak, carbon creep, dust demon, um, to help kids understand it and make it sticky for them. And uh, Turf Mutt was born, a superhero was born. Wow, that is fantastic and what a great story. Now, the pandemic, uh, we were all stuck at home, but it really started a trend towards outdoor activities. What did you notice about that time? Absolutely, uh, we call it backyarding. So folks reconnected to the outdoors, parents suddenly found themselves at home with their kids and they found themselves being teachers. Uh, luckily, we had a lot of curriculum in the schools delivered by Scholastic. And during COVID, we were one of the largest downloaded curricula um, in the United States. And that's where turf mud comes in, what your needs are. You can tailor your landscape. Do you want to be a nature lover, a landscaper, an entertainer, a chef, a zen space? That's the key is to be able to tailor nature for your particular needs or your kids or your dogs at the same time helping nature. I love that. And I love all the different uh, ways to make your space perfect for you and your family. So give us some tips on how to get our backyards in shape for spring, depending on what it is we'd like our yards to be for us. Sure. Well, first of all, know your zone. Know where you live. Arizona is very different than Louisville, Kentucky, where I am right now. But very different from the coast. And so know your zone. And that'll guide you in what you can plant. Uh, know your climactic zone. That'll tell you the kind of plants you can have and importantly, plan. Nowadays, post COVID, a lot of materials can be in short supply, labor can be in short supply, landscape first can be in short supply. So plan ahead. And so use plants for a fence line, use plants and particularly flowering plants to attract pollinators, bird support. You can make your yard aesthetic and beautiful at the same time benefiting nature. That's fantastic. Now, I like to call it taking a nature bath, but explain to us why getting outdoors is good for our health. Oh my goodness. Uh, significant health research has shown us that being outside helps reduce stress and anxiety. It's a great way to get your kids off the devices. And one of the ways that we can turf mutt, because we tell from a dog's point of view, a dog will get your kids off their devices. Get them a dog, get them a puppy. The Asian countries call it forest washing. And they've known about it for a long, long time. Just being outside, be quiet, listen to nature, and uh, it'll help your stress levels. Know your zone. That's what I'm going to remember, Chris. All good information. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. If you would like more information, just head over to the Turf Mutt Foundation website. A good way to ease yourself into spring is with a little spa relaxation. So let's head to Tucson for some much needed R&R.
Spawell is a desert oasis where we embrace not only the body, but the mind as well. So we really want our guests to take some time and enjoy themselves here at our spa whenever they come to visit us. We're located here at the base of the Push Ridge Mountains. There's a beautiful angle that models that same ridge behind us. Spa services are not just about coming in for your massage or your facial and leaving. There really has become more of an opportunity to embrace the entire visit and experience. So instead of just coming in and getting your massage and facial and leaving, our guests are really taking a moment to enjoy and increase their wellness opportunities. So they're coming in, having a massage, enjoying the pool, laying out by the, in the sunshine. We also have a movement studio where we offer yoga classes. We also um, host our Sparties, which are parties for our guests to enjoy in groups of people. So you're not interfering with the rest of our spa guests that are wanting to relax. And we also have an amazing salt inhalation room, which is very beneficial for immunity systems, as well as just a great place to relax and meditate. One of the most unique services that we offer here at Spa Well is the vibrational singing bowl experience, where you're laying on the massage table and you're actually having those bowls as they're singing placed on the body so that you have the vibration of those bowls vibrating your body and it helps to balance your natural frequency. It truly is a unique experience not to be missed. We've seen CBD really come full circle into the spa experience. It truly is an amazing ingredient to be used on the body. It really helps for stiff muscles and joints. And the CBD wrap and experience, it really helps your body to calm and soothe and to just really help to disconnect as well. Spa Well is open to not only our guests staying here at El Conquistador, but also to our local community. We have a couple of different packages that are available to our guests. There is a package that's part of an overnight stay, so staying here at El Conquistador and enjoying a Spa Well experience, as well as just a day package. You can certainly book any of our services a la carte as well, so you can mix and match and find whatever works best for yourself. I encourage you to visit our website, give us a call, book your appointments online, and we look forward to seeing you very soon in the future. Getting outdoors is important for our health. In fact, research shows that short-term memory is improved by 20% by simply walking outside in nature. So why not lace up those sneakers and start exploring? And also, let's just take a peek at what we have coming up on Creative Living. Tips to cut your grocery bill and ways to make your own chemical-free cleaning products. Although inflation may be dipping in some areas, it seems that food prices don't seem to be lowering at all. So here to give us some shopping tips is the supermarket guru, Phil Lempert. Hi, Phil. Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. So tell me this. Are you seeing all prices of food go up across the board or is it just staples like milk and eggs? Well, it, it's a combination of both. Uh, keep in mind uh, that when we look at eggs, the reason that eggs are seven bucks a dozen uh, versus two dollars a dozen has to do with the avian flu. There are 58 million um, hens that had to be destroyed. If we look at the price of beef, uh, the problem is that because of the climate conditions, it's too expensive now for farmers to feed corn and soy to the cows, so they've culled their herds. So there's less um, less cows th that are there. If we look at what's gone on with the war in Ukraine um, and Russia, you know, Russia is the largest exporter of manure. 
Um, who knew? And as a result, uh, the U.S. farmers have to pay more for manure. And Ukraine was the number one exporter of sunflower oil. Sunflower oil is used in a lot of salad dressings um, and, and other type of sauces. Um, so now there's a shortage of that. The manufacturers had to replace that oil with another kind of oil that was more expensive. So, you know, we're, we're going to see a lot of changes in probably just about every product in the supermarket. Wow. Okay, Phil, I'm hoping for some good news as we continue to talk. Is there anything that consumers can do to lower their grocery bills? Yes. Uh, store brands are a great way to save money. On average, you'll save between 20 and 40 percent, depending on the category. Um, the way to, to buy store brands is keep in mind that every store brand has a money back guarantee. So if you don't like it, bring the unused portion back. You'll get a full refund. That's number one. Number two. A lot of manufacturers um, have downtime, so they produce the store brands with the same recipe. The way you can tell that is look at the nutritional information on both the store brand and the name brand. Look at the ingredients on both. If they're identical, guess what? You're gonna get an identical product. But there are also other retailers that are out there like Aldi, like Trader Joe's, uh, that have done a fabulous job with their store brands. And frankly, sometimes the store brands are better um, than those national brands are. So don't be afraid of store brands at all. I love that. Don't be afraid of store brands at all. That is a great top tip right there, Phil. All right, give us your best advice on saving money. Well, you know, number one is don't take the path of the supermarket. Um, it's designed that when we walk in, we walk into that produce department. The produce department is like aromatherapy, great colors, great aromas. It makes us stay in the store longer. So what you want to do is you want to go into the center of the store first, where all those unemotional jars and boxes and cans are. Go there first. Also, make sure that just because it's the end of an aisle doesn't mean that it's on sale. Look for that price. Look to see whether or not it says sale item. So just be just be cognizant of what you're doing in the store. And that's one of the best ways to save money. All right, Phil, you got to you got to tell us, are these high prices here to stay? Yes. Um, there's no question. We've got the cheapest food supply in the world. Um, we've been very fortunate, um, but because of labor, um, trucking, transportation, and climate, these prices are not going to come down. You might see, you know, a, a typical product come down for a few weeks, but overall, our prices will continue to rise, um, hopefully not as much as they have. And as we get certain conditions rectified, like avian flu, and we get more hens, the price of eggs are going to come down. There's no question. Uh, is it going to be $1.99? Probably not, but it's not going to be $7 either. Phil, thank you so much for all this great information. For more information and you want to hear from Phil, just head to his website. Now that winter is behind us, it's time to get the kids outside and off their devices, right? Activities in nature have been linked to better well-being in children, including self-esteem, stress reduction, and resilience. Not to mention the fun they'll create with their friends. Don't go anywhere. We've got more to come on Creative Living. A simple way to clean without all of the chemicals. And we visit the River Road African American Museum in Louisiana. We are back with Tracy Perkins from Strawberry Hedgehog to talk about spring cleaning our homes. Mm -hmm. Tracy, me and probably so many other people have tons of cleaning products at home. Do we really need all of them? No, no. Um, it's a great marketing technique to sell you lots of things, but really you can get away with one good surface spray. You can use it on all sorts of different things. So talk about the difference between a store-bought product 
versus something that's handmade. Something that's handmade, especially if it's DIY like we're gonna do today, you know exactly every ingredient that's going into that product. Right. Yeah. So you know there's nothing in there that's going to harm anybody if you're worried about kids or pets or anything like that, you know as opposed to products that you can buy on conventional store shelves that they do not have to tell you what's in those products. And there are all sorts of things that are very harmful. If there are warnings to not pour it down the sink, if there are warnings to not let your kids get a hold of it, of course, it's filled with harmful things. You've got some great ideas on how to make our own home cleaning products. So let's just talk through these really quick. This is a soap? Yes, this is just a liquid soap. So uh, I believe it was last year the FDA finally declared triclosan as a toxin, and so it's eliminating it from hand soaps. That was a main disinfecting component, um, but you can get the exact same disinfecting power from just soap. So what we do is we take our bar soaps mm -hmm. and you can actually uh, shred it and mix it with boiling water oh. and put it in a pump bottle and then you have liquid soap. Okay, and we're always doing laundry and so laundry detergent, I mean, we're not even thinking about what chemicals are going in there and they go in our clothes and then they go in our bodies. Exactly. So this is a laundry powder. How is this made? Yes, so that's our laundry powder that we make. It has um, washing soda, baking soda, Epsom salt, uh, essential oils, and then our actual soap grated up in it. Um, and you only need a small amount because it's super concentrated, so a little bit goes a long way. And it doesn't contain any of the detergents that can irritate your skin. It doesn't contain any of the synthetic fragrance that can lead to all sorts of other problems. So you're gonna show us how to make one today. Yes. What are we making? We're making an all-purpose, all-surface spray. Which we love, like everybody has the all-purpose spray. Mm -hmm. I wanna have one in every single room of the house. And you're saying it's easy to make our own and it's going to get rid of the bacteria. Exactly, I'm gonna step you through it. Okay. Okay, I'm making it. All right, you're okay, making it. Am I it. using this? Yes, we're using okay. this spray bottle. Alrighty. All right, we're gonna start out with some white vinegar. Okay. Ah, I love that. Here we go. How much? We're gonna go one quarter of the way up. So <laughs> vinegar is an excellent disinfectant, but it's also, it's a great way to eliminate odors in the air. This What's is just that? distilled water. Oh. So we're gonna go almost to the oh, top, so right at the bend. So just, you're using a lot more distilled water than you are the vinegar. Absolutely. And then we're gonna use a little vodka. Oh. Um, the vodka yeah. will help disperse uh, and help That's it dry vodka. quickly. <laughs> so you're gonna go up to the bend. There so you go, the... so it's about one eighth vodka. Perfect. Oh, I did put a little bit too much in there. That's okay. <laughs> It's all good. I got a little extra shot of vodka in there. <laughs> Get a little, a little heavy hand as the bartender. Um, and then we're going to put in our essential oils. Okay. So this alone is a is a good disinfectant. It will kill bacteria on surfaces. But if you want it to smell amazing sure. and have an extra punch of disinfecting power, yeah. then go with the essential oils. Just going to do five drops of peppermint. We're going to do five. Tea tree. Tea tree is our best disinfecting mm, oil. I can smell it. And Ooh. then we're gonna do a full dropper of the lemon essential oil. Like that much? Yes. Look at all that fresh lemon. So each time you use it, you're gonna just shake, shake, shake. And then make sure that your nozzle is on spray. Yep. We're ready to go. Okay. So I'm gonna spray this. I love that you're sharing the secrets with us on how to make this stuff ourselves. Tracy, thank you so much. Great information. Thanks, Jane. Absolutely. For more information on Strawberry Hedgehog, just head to the website. Stick around, we've got much more coming up on Creative Living. Celebrating African American history in Louisiana. Take a trip to Louisiana to tour the acclaimed River Road African American Museum. I would like to say uh, welcome to the River Road African American Museum. What we do here at the River Road African American Museum is connect the past to the present. Our museum um, was founded in 1994 by uh, my sister Kathy Hamburg and our family to actually uh, talk about the history uh, along the river here in South Louisiana. We've been around for about 29 years here in the Donaldsonville and Ascension Parish area. 
and has become one of the premier museums for the state of Louisiana when it comes to African American history. When you think about black history, what we want you to understand is that this is more than black history. This is Louisiana history. All of the rural communities are represented in this museum that we call the River Road African American Museum. This is America's history. This is a part of world history. Our museum has collected uh, various buildings and artifacts um, that are in relation to the life of those Africans who were brought to Louisiana to work the plantations and the lives of those descendants who now live in this community. Our museum talks about the resilience. We talk about the lives of those individuals who worked and uh, made it possible for the economic development of this entire uh, community. And through our community programs, we hope to develop after school programs, a Saturday program, and a summer camp so that the children of today can learn about this history and hopefully it will encourage and inspire them to do better in the future. Another highlight is our exhibit on jazz. We talk about um, the origins of jazz. Most people relate to New Orleans as that place and the birthplace of jazz. We give them credit for the birthplace, but we have one of the greatest jazz musicians of all times uh, by the name of King Oliver, who was born about um, a mile and a half from here, not far from here in a town called Aben. We have various tours. We have a self-guided tour where you can come in and kind of walk and read the information that's um, being presented here on your own. We do have guided tours with our directors, um, which is kind of an executive type tour. We also offer bicycle tours called Museum on Wheels. We take you on a bicycle ride around the community and talk about the importance of the African-American influences just throughout this community. This house was built in the early 1900s. Uh, and so many people have never had the opportunity even to walk into one of these spaces, never less to come inside and to find the information that we have displayed here and exhibited here at our museum. Our museum says in order to understand the future, we must take a look at our past. Thank you for joining us on Creative Living. I'm Jane Klaus and I'll see you next time. Happy Spring!